Nigeria is one of the worst countries for minimum wage earners to live in, a new report by e-commerce firm Picodi has revealed. As of January 2020, Nigeria recorded a highest year-to-year -year increase in the minimum wage of 26,697 naira. This is a 64.8% increase when compared to 16,200 naira received in 2019. Hence, out of 54 countries, Nigeria earned the first spot in terms of an increase in minimum wage yearly. However, when converted into the dollar, Nigeria's minimum wage is said to be one of the lowest. Joining me in the live studio this morning, still with us, is public affairs analyst Golahan Lojede. Thank you for staying with us, Golahan. Now, interesting report by Picodi. Nigeria is one of the worst countries to live in for minimum wage earners. What informed this? What are the indices that informed this, mm. this report? The, the report had looked at the minimum wage in Nigeria, compared it with previous period, and also compared it with other countries. I think about 54 countries, countries yes. uh, it had compared it with. And um, by the time those numbers were, it, on, on the, on, in terms of absolute numbers, it looked as if Nigeria had the biggest leap. Yearly. You know, yes. year, year on year. Yeah. Um, but when you reduce it to dollars, uh, suddenly the, 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 the chart flips and you find out that the amount is not something to celebrate uh, in the real sense of it. Now, uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, sorry. Just okay. Uh, and this is, um, this is not unexpected if you consider inflation in Nigeria, um, which somehow went up last year. Um, the, the, the closure of the borders had a way of increasing the food inflation, which is a huge component of our inflation number. Yes. Now, if you flash back at the hierarchy of needs, for this category of people who earn that minimum wage, 30,000 or 26,000, I think it's less taxes or whatever yeah. that the guy is talking about, they are primary, the primary thing they spend on, number one, is food. Food, yes. So whatever affects food automatically affects the disposable income of this lower rung of the ladder. And I think that is basically what the report was saying. In Nigeria, once the food prices go up, that seg segment of the society suffers the more because they, are now, they now have to cough out more of that income into buying food. Yes. And all the other needs, housing, clothing, suffers, essentially. Okay, now, now the minimum wage should actually protect employees against unduly low earnings. But we can't say that is, that's the case for Nigeria. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is not the case. Yeah. But in, in my normal life, um, for example, the food inflation that is part of the problem might actually improve. Now, I'm alarmed by the percentage. Now, I want, I want to read this because the percentage okay. is quite huge. Now, the report also revealed that a significant portion of the minimum wage is spent up in high food prices. Correct. Now, now according to Picodi, minimum um, wage earners spend about 121.4% of their monthly salary on basic food items, while in comparison to the other countries, they spend just about 7%. 7 that is a huge margin. It's, it's, it's also a bit difficult to... Yeah to interpret. Okay. Does it, because it says 120-something percent of yes. them, that means they borrow to buy food. 100% of your salary means if you earn 30,000, 30,000. You spend the entire 30,000, that's 100%. Yes. So if you're saying they, they spend 120-something, then automatically you're saying that they borrow to even buy the food. I'm not sure. Um, I, I think there is need for more clarification yes, or information. Yes, by Picodi, yes. Yes, by Picodi especially on that particular number that you're talking about. Is it saying that they borrow to buy food? I'm not so sure if that is what it's trying to say as well. But that is what the number seems to be saying. Uh, yeah. All right, there's still, well, there's, there's, a court, there's a court order now for all the 68 governors to, to pay minimum wage, which we're still hoping, and there will be an adherence to. How do you see this panning out eventually? Most states will pay. That's how it will, it will pan out. Uh, the finance bill has been signed to law. Yes. Uh, the finance bill has, as part of it, the increase in VAT. 85% of that increase goes back to those states. If you, if you remember in 2019, it was part of the arguments of the governors yeah. that look, we don't have money. They might even be part of the lobbies for that VAT to be increased. So now they're going to get 
at 85% of that increment coming to them. They should be able to pay, essentially. All right. Uh, let, let's, let's, let's look at the dichotomy between our fiscal and monetary policy. Do you think this also comes to bear when it comes to considering the minimum wage um, situation we we're currently facing in Nigeria? We have a fairly complex situation with minimum wage. Okay. And I'm not sure if we're, ready, if we're at that juncture where we're ready to confront it. Because the people's side of the coin is totally different from the government side of the coin, as far as minimum wage is concerned. Yes. Then we also have things like private versus the public sector yes. dichotomy as well. Yes. Um, if you say go and pay 30,000 minimum wage now, are you, are, do you think that the private sector that currently pays uh, maybe certain categories of staff, 15,000, will go to 30,000? How do you enforce that? Can, you, can it be enforced? So essentially, the focus you might find out, or, or where the effectiveness will be, you might find out, will be in the public sector. And what percentage of Nigerian workers are in that segment? It's a small percentage. How many? What, what is the entire population of federal civil service? Bella Hall, Lujade, public affairs analyst, thank you very much for your contribution this morning. It's good.